the Minus World. It's legendary, but it's also real. It's just not easy to get there. And once you do get there, you're stuck. The only way out is death. But don't worry, we here at Famicom Dojo are happy to train your game and show you how to do it. So you can die there! <clears throat> Minus World? Where the hell do you want to go there? You only die there, you can't even do them. Here's what you'll need. The first thing to do is to get to World 1-2. You've done this before, right? So it shouldn't be that hard. Easy peasy, Frank and Beansies, right? <laughs> it's, a, it's a funny one, all right. Yeah. The, the, the sun was in my eyes. Now, you do have to be Super Mario in order to get this exploit to work, so don't feel bad if you mess up and lose a mushroom. Whoops. It's really dark down here. Uh, it's okay. There's one right before where you need to go. Alright, here's what you do. Get the screen to scroll over as far as you can to the right. You should be able to see a column of pixels from the warp pipe. This isn't necessary, strictly speaking, but doesn't hurt. This is the variation of the trick you've probably seen done the most. You need to break a couple of blocks so that when you jump, you aren't colliding with anything. Well, nothing except what's at the back of Mario's head. That's because this is actually a hit detection exploit, which we'll explain a bit more later on. You're still trying? It's hard, man! You call yourself a gamer. Actually, I prefer to call myself Gaming Curious. Yes! Okay. Careful, don't get too excited. It's crucial that you don't go too far over to the right, or you'll trigger the Warp Zone welcome message and it'll all be over. Just go into the first pipe as soon as you can get there. Wow, I haven't seen this since I was a kid. Thought I imagined it. Okay, so now what happens? Oh, I'm back where I started. The timer is even still going. Ah! Just give up now. No, no, there's, there's, there's gotta be a way out! Well, look, it's just that we have a lot to get through, and... If I could just... Crap! Game over, man! Game over! Ah, give me that. Okay, so there's actually another way to do this, but you need to get back to World 1-2 again. This is taking too long. Now this method's a bit easier, as the hit window is more forgiving. However, it's going to still involve a little fancy finger work. Still facing backwards and standing a bit closer, you need to crouch and jump. You need to let go of down as soon as you jump into the air and immediately start pushing to the right. If you keep pressing down, it's harder to get the air control you need to get yourself wedged in the wall. Look at that, way easier. If you're having trouble with either of these methods, try standing on roughly the same spot in the pipes as you see in the videos here. Also, with either method, the object is to continually arc upwards so that the hit detection glitches at just the right moment. Alright, we already know how this ends. Your doom! Okay, so what's going on? 
First is the hit detection glitch, which we've already mentioned. The idea is to get stuck in the block so you get pushed through to the right side. The second is sequence breaking. You're actually getting to the warp zone a lot sooner than you should. Normally the screen scroll locks and Mario needs to run all the way to the right in order to enter the zone. Walking through the wall, you actually reach the pipe before the Welcome to the Warp Zone message appears. And then something magical happens. Well, not so much magical as coded. Magical? Programmers had a lot less memory to work with in those early Famicom and NES games, so to save space they'd sometimes stash values in places they didn't exactly belong. When you enter the warp pipe too early, you're actually warping to world 36-1 instead of 4-1 because the value only gets set after the screen stops scrolling and locks into place. Something about the World 5 pipe being the one that's loaded first, and a null value or something, because there's only one central pipe in that world. But that's code monkey talk. I understood it. The Minus World screen should show 36-1 is the level name, but since there's no icon for 36, it's just a blank block dash 1. The result is that Mario enters an infinite netherworld, from which there is no escape. Minus World? Where the f*** would you want to go in some place like that? Sheesh! Luigi! Get the mop! And a bucket! Think I'm gonna throw up. So wait. Oh, here we go. Code monkey talk. If this glitch is dependent on coding, does that mean there could be different minus worlds in different versions of Super Mario Brothers? Oh! That was actually a really good question. There are at least three variations of the Super Mario Brothers cartridge in the US, but they all behave the same way. Even the Famicom version uses the same code. Rats. Except, did you know there was a Famicom Disk System version? It's true! Uh, right there. Oh. The Famicom Disk System version. Little, yellow, different, better. Here's what you'll need. This is new. Okay, so what's going on? The reason the Famicom Disk System version of the game continues after Minus World 1 is because of the flagpole. That's the indication to the game that should take you to the next world, and so it does. Or at least tries to. The cartridge version of the Minus World is really just 2-2 or 7-2, which normally brings you to a flagpole after going through the pipe to progress to the next level. But in the Minus World version, it just deposits you at the start of the level, because the next screen, the level 36-1, doesn't exist. The Famicom Disk System Minus World 1 is just 5-3 with corrupted enemies, swapped out tile sets, missing interactive elements, swimming instead of running and jumping, and has a flagpole at the end, but no flag. 
Mindless World 2 is a pretty straightforward copy of World 2-3 or World 7-3. And Mindless World 3 is just a variation of World 4-4, which, when you beat it, cycles you back to the beginning of the game. Mindless World 3 is a particular pain because you can actually go the wrong way and... get stuck. Remember how we said one of the tricks to get into the Minos world was to not activate the Warbazon message because doing so makes the game behave differently? Uh-huh. Well, the actual World 4-4 is one of those castles that loops over and over unless Mario walks through it in the correct sequence. For those who are curious, it's top, middle, bottom. As you can see, when you pick the correct path, the other two end up being blocked off. Because Famicom Disk System Minus World 3 is actually just a corrupted version of 4-4, this looping code doesn't function properly when you run through the same area of the castle. If you take the top or middle paths instead of looping over again, you'll end up at that dead end you saw before. But it's not the only place you can mess up. In the Famicom Disk System Minus World 1, touching the flagpole too high in this water level means that Mario might not touch the ground, and he'll actually miss the door to the castle. Even worse, since you touch the flagpole, there's no more counter. Mario's destined to walk on forever. Ugh, I'd rather take the infinite water level of death, please. Except if you finish the game at the end of Minus World 3, it actually starts a perfectly normal version of the second quest, complete with buzzy beetles replacing Goombas. But if you try to do the Minus World trick again, you'll be returned to regular Minus One. So no, no, you, you can't go to World One Dash Two and enter a Minus Minus World or something like that. Okay, but this game has been remade or ported a bunch of times, right? What about those? Even though the wall walking trick still works, the warp exploit has been fixed and just brings you to World 4-1. However, the Wii Virtual Console version, which is essentially a direct port of the original cartridge version, works as expected. The 3DS Virtual Console version, and the Famicom Mini and NES Classic series for Game Boy Advance, all emulate the cartridge version of Super Mario Bros. However, Super Mario Bros. Deluxe for Game Boy Color removes the hit detection exploit entirely. And that's all the different versions of Super Mario. Aren't you forgetting one? No, I went through the entire list of Nintendo consoles. Ah, that explains how you missed it. What? The one that wasn't for a Nintendo console. What? Well, there was Super Mario Bros. Special released by Hudson Soft for the NEC PC-8001. Also the Sharp X one. There was? Yeah, you know, NEC and Hudson. Those guys would go on to do... No, PC Engine! Some other stuff. Two weeks. We're gonna need another Sean. Hey, Vink, I just want the Minus World's real and... Oh. That's just Sean from episode three. Nobody liked that one anyway. To see the full-length clips of the cartridge and Famicom Disk System versions of the Minus World, check out our show notes, or subscribe to the Some Orange Guy channel on YouTube. We have even more tips and tricks coming your way. Thank you for training at the Famicom Dojo. Famicom Dojo! Jikai! Famicom Dojo. Hey, I hate this job.